Coming up on show 785, the VWI D-Range, only to be sold online. Where do dealers fit in? Well, if you stick around, I'll tell you more. Plus on the podcast today, a new battery story. Once again, we're talking million mile batteries, but cobalt free as well from a name you may not have heard before. Kia's design boss hints at an all electric stinger and work has begun on a big vehicle to grid project in Italy. So good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you're listening in the world. Welcome to EV News Daily. Uh, for Friday, 22nd of May, I go through every EV story so you don't have to. Thank you, as always, to MyEV.com for helping make the show. It's why they created MyEV.com in the first place, to help, uh, just as I do with this podcast, to help you learn about EVs, to stay in touch with the very latest. If you want to talk to someone about EVs, whether it's a Tesla or a Nissan or a BMW i3 and all the rest as well, you can check out MyEV.com. So Volkswagen today announced that 100% of its retail partners in Germany have agreed to a new uh, online sales model that's very Tesla-like, if you ask me, but also sort of, it's like Tesla Plus, because you get all the benefits of having a local dealer and someone to go to that is hopefully closer to you than, uh, I was, I've was. i said this on a podcast recently, uh, one of the things that holds me back from Tesla ownership is that I am a good couple of hours away from the nearest place of anyone to have a look at the car. Like, I'm two hours from Bristol and two hours from London. And so if I own a Tesla in this country and it goes wrong to the point of needing to go back to the mothership, it's going on the back of a trailer for a very long journey. And I'm just not used to that. I'm always used to owning cars where you have a local dealer and it's somewhere that they can go back to. It's not two hours away. I suppose that's kind of the norm if you have, I don't know, specialist cars or classic cars or high-performance cars, but that's never been me. Now, VW are going down the route of online sales in Germany for the upcoming ID range. Not just the ID3, but it does start with the ID3, but it'll be all of those cars. According to Teslarati, they say customers will buy directly from Volkswagen, either on their computer or their smartphone. They'll spec the car, they'll get a straight price online. That's the price they'll pay. They'll go through the configurator and then it goes to the dealer. Now, the dealers will continue to be remaining involved in the process through a personalized customer care and local service. I'm not sure what that is. Sounds like a great phrase to use when pitching this. I don't quite know what it means. Personalized customer care and local service. Well, okay. Let's hope it just means they'll be looking after you. Uh, after ordering the Volkswagen ID car through the VW main website, buyers will then choose a dealer that they want to liaise with, that they will take care of any of their needs throughout the life of their car. I'm sure you can change it as time goes on, but things like inspections and maintenance and servicing, we know there's not really much of that with EVs. Um, dealers assume the role of a traditional vehicle sales representative, Volkswagen said. Once you've bought the car, the dealer takes over the acquisition, as it were, like the organizing test drives and the, the transaction gets processed by the dealer and the vehicle gets handed over by the dealer, but in coordination with VW. Uh, the inclusion of the new online model of ordering VW cars helps customers save money because it's the manufacturer, it's VW, who then takes on the burden of vehicle financing, but also the burden of residual value risk and actually the cost of having inventory in stock. Some of these fees are included when you buy a car from a dealership because it can add hundreds, it can add hundreds of dollars because the dealer is the one who has to buy the car from the manufacturer and then store the vehicle on their lot until it's sold. If you're buying direct, you're going straight to the horse's mouth, as it were. You're going direct to where the car came from. VW assume that risk of having cars sitting around waiting to be sold. What do you think of this? Well, you know, I must say that I do like that model of buying things. I'm not a particularly happy barter person. I don't enjoy that whole bidding process. I prefer to know what the price is, and I can make my mind up. If it's too expensive, I won't buy it. And if it's a good deal, I will buy it. I'm not out there to go into, like, battle. Like, that's like uh, a sales negotiation tactic that some people are comfortable with and some people aren't. I just, I, I like to know what the price is. So, um, for me, 
I would like this. I like I, I like the online model of buying cars. I can sit there and in the comfort of my own home configure the car, know what I'm going to get. But what about when you take it into the field of electric cars, people along that curve, depending on where they are on the adoption curve, not the early adopters, not you and I, but the people who are like, who are thinking about an electric car, but want to test drive one, who want to sit inside one, who want to make sure that an electric car is just a normal car, which you and I know they are. They're just another way of powering a car, but they just need that reassurance. Well, dealers still need to be there for people to have test drives. And yes, 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 I know. Tesla say that if you buy a car and you don't like it in the thousand miles, you give it back or the first week. Well, that's great. That's that's a wonderful thing to give to their customers. But I don't want to spend $60,000 to get a car and then realize I don't really like it. I'm going to give it back. Organizing all the finance, being out of pocket. Look, that's just not practical. I, I know Tesla will argue till they're blue in the face. That is the best way to do it. But you want to test drive a car. And that's where dealers come in. So it'd be really interesting to see how this moves with the times and moves with people, you know, younger generations wanting to transact that way, but also having that safety net of having a local dealer. But the dealerships need to make money and they have traditionally made money on servicing. And EVs don't really require that much servicing. Well, you know, when they go wrong, they go wrong. <laughs> that doesn't, I know that sounds a bit obvious, but generally when an EV goes wrong, if it's the battery or the motor, the inverter, it's it's a big problem. It's not the kind of thing, it's not the kind of fix of a moment, um, generally. I'm, I'm generally speaking here. Otherwise, they're very reliable. I'd love to know your thoughts on today's main story. All right, moving on. In an online presentation, S-Volt gave us more information about their new battery cell. It is a cobalt-free battery cell. It's arriving next year. It's coming from S-Volt, and it's going to be used in battery packs, and they um, assembled with cell-to-pack technology. What is this? Well, at the moment, uh, the majority of the ways ele uh, electric cars are built is cells, which is the individual uh, right down to the, the the smallest component is made into a battery or a module uh, first. So those are those cells are packaged together into like an intermediate stage into the the, the module into the battery. Cell to pack technology is able to reduce some of the packaging and some of the ways that batteries are built at the moment, which means you can put more cells in or you can do it more efficiently you can save certainly save cost uh, with cell to pack technology used instead of having battery cells inside modules when you take the modules away uh, you end up making batteries in a different way long prismatic battery cells connected in series uh, that are put in an array which then make up a battery pack says push evs today well, the new cobalt-free batteries from S-Volt are high-voltage battery cells, nominal voltage of 4.7 volts. They can be charged at 5 volts, which makes it possible to assemble simpler battery packs with far fewer cells. Only 80 cells assembled in series are needed to reach 400 volts, or 160 cells in series to reach 800 volts. In the comments section, it was always, it's interesting to see the, the comments of of uh, specialist stories like this. But one of my favourite writers about EVs, Dr Max Holland, actually left a comment on Push EVs. He said this, The S-Volt presentation made some good points around the need to minimise cobalt, which industry insiders are well aware of. However, high-grade nickel also needs to ramp up mineral supply volume in the coming five years and sometimes sees a disruptive price spike occasionally. Arguably, only LFP cells are truly free from these kind of kinds of mineral supply constraints. But the overall industry will benefit benefit from having a wide variety of different chemistries and pathways to get the end result. And some degree of uh, substitutability uh, between minerals, uh, so that no one mineral becomes a bottleneck or a pain point or holds the industry to ransom. Uh, Max says, I emphasise with S-Volt seeing Tesla, CATL and BYD getting a, their own share of the battery headlines if S-Volt have an efficient zero cobalt approach with Celtapak technology, it's a good thing and we understand why they want to announce it now, even though not making their way to market until 2021. Let's move on and talk Kia. We return to the much scrutinised but not very well-selling Kia Stinger. Critically acclaimed but 
slow selling at the moment. Uh, thanks to an interview in Top Gear with the head of Kia Design, Karim Habib, we have a, not only official confirmation that the four-door fastback is getting a mid-cycle refresh, but also hinting about where the Stinger name is going to go, says Autoblog. Uh, Habib says he hopes the spirit of the Stinger remains as the Kia brand will evolve as technology moves towards electric and as the world and its appetite for these types of cars changes. The concept probably has to evolve as well, he said. Reading between the lines there, it looks like that after this mid-cycle refresh, it could well be that Kia makes the Stinger an all-electric car, or at least an electrified car, to make it more relevant and keep the high performance. Work has begun in Italy on a new vehicle-to-grid project. The COVID-19 outbreak has not put a stop to the cooperation between Fiat Chrysler and NG, uh, nor to their commitment to support this new V2G project. Uh, since the announcement last September uh, that uh, they would work together for electric cars powering the grid based on a smart charging infrastructure, uh, Fiat Chrysler has selected NG as their technical partner for the project. They're building out their infrastructure at a uh, at their big plant in Mira Fiori. Uh, it's in Turin and the first phase of a vehicle to grid pilot project when it's fully complete it'll be the largest of its kind in the world and they'll be making uh, electric Fiat's there in Italy and using them uh, to power the grid when the grid needs some extra support and that's is a brilliant story, and more of the same, please. Uh, we see, as we head into a weekend here in the UK that's very, very windy, we have something like 3.7 gigawatts of excess energy uh, on Saturday. It's going to be very, very windy. It's a bank holiday weekend. There's going to be very low demand. It's sunny and hot now as we head into late spring and early summer. And so there is a massive oversupply of electricity on the grid on Saturday here, at least. And that means that electricity providers working with the wholesale market uh, could well be paying you to take electricity off the grid or they have to start shutting down means of electricity generation, which can be quite expensive uh, depending on what it is and how you do it. So it's easier to pay customers to charge their car, to heat the hot water, to do their cooking earlier in the day rather than everyone turning their oven on at, you know, half past five, six o'clock to cook their tea on a Saturday night. Uh, and so I'll, I'm certainly uh, looking like, I don't know what it is going to be yet, but looking like getting paid a reasonable amount of money from our electricity provider to charge the car on Saturday to take energy off the grid. When cars and the grid can work together in a smart way going forward, it's just going to be a, a whole different way of thinking about how we use energy on the planet. A couple of Tesla stories to finish off, and this was a weird one. In a recent filing with the Texas Electric Utility Commission, Tesla seemed to relegate vehicle to grid to their future list of projects that would come sometime, implying that EV adoption hadn't reached the necessary scale yet. Elon has talked up and talked down vehicle to grid over the years. Tesla has a history of building in future hardware features, but they're not really talking about them. So it kind of made sense when earlier this week, uh, the industry, uh, the, the uh, EV blog Electrek ran an exclusive and they claimed that all Teslas were now ready to do vehicle to grid. They claimed and reported uh, that they had spoken to an electrical engineer and this person had discovered a bi-directional charging capability on the Model 3. And according to Charles at uh, Charge TV's websites, Phil Sado uh, actually challenged this. Now, uh, the original chap was uh, called Mr. Gaxiola, who provided the story to Electric. But then uh, another engineer, uh, Phil Sado, made a video and said, actually, I don't believe that's the case. You can identify components on the circuit board uh, that he said were the bidirectional bits. They're just diodes. Uh, which, of course, allow current to flow only in one direction. The website Electric Revs then chipped in. They spoke to the original source, uh, Mr. Gaxiola, who admitted to them, yeah, he may have been mistaken. Right, so this week it all got very frothy, and lots of Tesla fans got very excited uh, following this. Uh, so this one website went with the news that uh, all Teslas were now equipped with bi-directional charging. It Appears that may not be the case, uh, probably isn't the case, uh, but even then, what it did is it did start the conversation with many people, 
about how EVs and the grid and charging in two directions will be part of our future. There's no doubt about it. It will be part of our future. I'm so excited for it. Final story. And Tesla's Model 3 has lost its glass roof. But not for all the cars. Only if you want it. There's a new convertible conversion that you can buy. Newport Convertible Engineering, NCE, has a Model 3 convertible conversion which they will do for you. According to Autoblog, uh, it'll take them two or three months to complete a conversion. NCE strips out the entire interior, they restructure the car, they reinforce it, they cut the body into bits, and they add a convertible roof to the top of a Model 3. Uh, the basic conversion kit is $30,000. According to Motor Trend, if you want it to be electrified, and you do really, don't you? You want a power hood. It's 40 k and it looks as if uh, when they take the the original glass roof off. The B pillars stay in place. They connect them with a kind of roll hoop of sorts, but I don't know. I'd love you to look at this picture of the convertible Model 3 and let me know what you think. There's something to me that doesn't look right about it. And obviously I'm comparing it to what a 3 looks like, but I'm not so sure. Just because sometimes you can do something doesn't mean you should doesn't work for me. Maybe it works for you. Let me know. And uh, let me know about what you think of question of the week this week. We're talking about how the engineering company Dyson spent £500 million on an electric car project. And because they couldn't get the eventual price to the customer down below 150 k they scrapped the whole project. I'm sure some of that knowledge will be transferred other places, but still, it's been knocked on the head. What do you think? Should they have carried on and just sold a high-price EV? Or were they right to knock the project on the head and, and look towards selling affordable EVs, which many people say we do need more affordable EVs, not more expensive trinkets and toys for those that can afford 150 grand on a new electric car? Email me, hello at evnewsdaily.com, or leave a comment on the YouTube show. Got to say, as always, thank you to every patron of the show, 227 of them, uh, sign up on Patreon, and every month uh, their funding brings this podcast to you. They also pay for the archive to stay online as well. 785 shows in the archive, which you can access for free, thanks to our patrons. Uh, the blog is evnewsdaily.com. Our premium partners are Phil Roberts of Electric Future, Brad Crosby, Avid Technology, Brightsmith Group for Clean Tech Talent, Porsche of The Village in Cincinnati, and Audi of Cincinnati. East. If you want to come and say hi on social, search EV News Daily. Have a wonderful day as we head into the weekend. I'll catch you tomorrow. And remember, there is no such thing as a self-charging hybrid. <laughs>